the color red. Shiny Pokemon, smash them together, and what do you get? Some of the dopest shiny Pokemon in the games. So why not hunt for a whole team of them? Well, because it'll take forever and probably destroy my sanity if I find a shiny that isn't red. Anyway, let's ignore that though and head into Pokemon Y, where I'll be attempting this run whilst also under the Hardcore Nuzlocke rule set. This of course means no items in battle, set mode is on, and no overleveling. Let's do this! I decided to be a girl in this run, and I named myself Nami. I woke my bed, which is pink! Ew, gross, get me out of here fast. I meet up with some of the fellow neighborinos and pick up my starter. Now, I think Chespin Shiny was more of a brown than a red, so I just decided to skip the soft resetting this time around, and instead go for Fletchling as my starter. Not gonna lie, this also saves me a lot of time soft resetting. Forgive me, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. And so I begin my back and forth in the starter grass looking for my burp. The way! Yes! Shiny Fletchling! Oh my god! Finally! Oh my god! Fletchling is a lot more orange right now, but as he evolves, he gets more and more red. Which is what we like to see. We name him Robin because, like, Robin, like, it can, it can, uh, Robin is like a bird. Uh, okay. Let's move on. From here on up until the first gym, honestly, not a lot happens. We stroll through a forest, battle some dudes, and get our Fletchling to a respectable level 12 for our first gym battle. And so it begins. Viola is a bug specialist, which is great for us early on, as Robin takes out her first Pokemon Surskit with just a peck and a quick attack. Vervillium really put on the pressure though with its infestation as it begins doing tick damage each turn. This does come down to the wire, but we do manage to take it out with a final peck, earning us badge number one. From here, we can make our way up to the big French city. Oui, oui, senor. I don't know. I don't speak it in French. And we get our hair colored and cut. Yes, this is important. I, I don't know why I'm focusing on it. But we do get our nice orange hair, the closest nice. thing I guess you can get to red. And also, you know, it matches the name theme. Also, we take down the professor with ease, claim our non-shiny Manda, and throw it in the trash. That's right. Get out of here. On to the next route we go. We meet up with some of the neighborinos, and after beating them, our Robin evolves into a slightly more red bird. And they make fun of me for only having the one Pokemon still. So I thought, let's head up to Route 6 and begin hunting for a particular red boy. And after an absurd amount of time, finally... Yes, baby! Shiny Hornet! We name it Zoro and head into the palace. We then corner a dog, probably giving it some kind of PTSD, and wake up this chunga with some melodic tunes. Well, I guess it's not melodic, it's the opposite of melodic. I guess it's more hardcore rock tunes. Can you play that on a flute? Uh, probably not. Okay. This eventually leads us to the next town, and effectively, my next hunt as well. Now, I love electric Pokemon, so that's why we're gonna hunt for Helioptile. Oh! Yes! Oh my god, look at that burnt boy! Look at the burnt boy! Yes! Helioptile's shiny is this beautiful burnt body red, like someone been tanning for too long, kinda, kinda vibe, you know? With his yellow hair, I name him Sanji, and we head into the cave to face Team Flare. Oh, who's this funky little character? What's this? This is your worst nightmare, boy. We take down his hound door and then his Zubaticus Maximus. And after a quite a close battle with this confused ray being quite obnoxious, we nevertheless beat him and push on further into this cave, eventually getting to this scientist after a few more battles. Heading towards the second gym, I wanted to add a water mon to the team, and the one I picked out was Cloncha. But unfortunately, I had not done my research properly and found out that it's actually an X exclusive Pokemon. So instead I head up the cliffside and I notice you can actually find one of my favorite Pokemon here. I didn't even, it wasn't even on my radar, but as I did more, more research, I found out it was here. But before I found the Pokemon that I actually wanted, first we found this. Oh, what the? Oh, no. Oh. Let me check me and shell doesn't evolve into red. I'm just I'm almost positive it doesn't, but this is fucking depressive. It's pink. Is that close enough, guys? Is pink close enough to red? Oh no. 
I'm catching it anyway. I don't care. I'm gonna catch it anyway. I caught it anyway because it's a shiny, but chucked it in the box because obviously we can't use it. But a week later, after really feeling the burn out of that Mianfu, we find... Oh! Shiny Absol! Let's go! Oh, yes! Oh my god, look at it! Oh, oh that is so fucking nice. Oh my god. Okay, now we're actually gonna catch the damn thing, though. Um... One of the most dope red shinies in the whole game, Absol, is added to the team. We name it Chopper and head down to Gym 2. This Ice Climber, I mean Rock Climber, doesn't know what he's getting himself into here. I lead with Zoro against Amora as we go for Sword Stand to raise our attack. Unfortunately, we do get full paralyzed next turn and Shadow Claw almost takes it out, but it does heal back up. We do take it all the way back down to red again and hang on before finishing it off. As Tyrant comes in, obviously I can't stay in here, so I swap to Chopper who resists the bite, but it does get a crit. I set up some evasion with double team and go for a bite flinch, and then next turn, finish it off. Bad shoe, boom, let's go. Oh, Cliff Badge? More like he should jump off a cliff. Dude, that was too far. Yeah, okay, fair, fair enough. On our way to Megatown and badge number three, Team Flare decides to get in my way again. Even though their red suits are very cool, I must destroy them all. On arrival, our rival challenges us for the right to use Mega Pokemon. This fight is very easy with my current squad. Zoro takes down Meowstic with a Shadow Claw, Absol in next gets finished by my cooler and red Absol, and finally, Cooladin is knocked by the Red Robin. This leads us to our next gym fight, the fighting gym, of which we are very prepared for. First up is Mianfu. Oh god, don't remind me of Mianfu. <laughs> Luckily, our Fletchlinger does take it out after it heals up. Machoke is in next, and Zoro has great immunity against Machoke's set, so I set up two Swords Dances and knock it out with an Aerial Ace. Finally, Hawlucha only has fighting damage moves as well, so we have a free win with Aerial Ace. We can now claim our Mega Bracelet as well. And you know what would be mega awesome is if you're enjoying the video, drop a like on it and uh, subscribe if you don't want to miss any of the crazy challenges that are coming up next. Also, P.S. If you ever want to chat to me, I'm always talking in my Discord and the link for that is in the description below. We cross the water, ride a train, and this boy already wants to fight me again. Sucks for him because I ain't interested. We roll him again and head into Gym 4. And the Grass Gym is also pretty easy. Jump Lop in first affords me the opportunity to double sword stance with Hon Edge yet again and one shot Jump Lop. Go Goat and Weeping Bell, aka the Glizzy Gobbler. What that mouth do though? From here we can head into the only barren sort of desert area in the game and acquire a Sunstone. Slap it on Heliolisk like it needs any more sun, but okay, and evolve it into a slightly bigger burnt boy. Y'all remember those flame boys from earlier? Yeah, uh, I, I think they've become terrorists now and they're doing something with a power plant. I don't know, blow it up or something. I, I, I'm still figuring this out. I, I guess they're doing something bad, so I, I guess I'll stop them. The only real threat is this high level Houndoom here and the fear of what someone who wears goggles like this is actually capable of. Turns out, actually they can't do anything as we restore power to the city and the French tower thing. I, I don't know what this... What is that thing called? I don't know. Also, both Honage and Fletchlinger evolve into Dewblade and Talonflame, respectively. Making it back here, I head into the stone shop, and oh my dear, will you look at this? He's selling some Mega Stones. Epic! So I pick up Absolute and Gyaradosite, and now I know what you're thinking. You can't normally get the stones here, but in this run, I, I want to actually be able to use the shinies we caught in their Mega forms as, like, what's the point of catching some cool Mega Pokemon if we can't even use them? So that's why I'm allowing it. But... Gym 5 is just down the street in that big tower of Eiffel thing. And obviously, I get all of these easy Pokemon questions, right? I said, obviously, I get all of these easy Pokemon questions, right? And head up to the leader. Even though I got all of the questions right, I... Stupidly, I thought you had to talk to Bonnie to go back down. But in actuality, this actually just starts the fight if you get too close. Of which I was not prepared, because my team was quite weak by this point. But as we get into this fight, we're actually able to get off a couple of charge parabolic charge combos, which means we raise our special defense by three stages and restore almost to full HP 
With our crit rate up as well, we've really set ourselves up for this fight. We do take down his Amoga eventually, which leads to the fight with a fellow Heliolisk. But as the two Heliolisk heads bob, we finish it off with a Razor Wind. This leaves just Magneton who can't deal much damage at all as we heal through all of his attacks with Parabolic Charge and with our special defense up this high, there's no way we die. Ultimately ending in badge number 5 landing in the palm of my hand. Now we have to fight stupid Kallen again. Leave me alone man, I'm not giving you my number! What, he already has my number? Okay, whatever. Let's head into badge number 6. This time it's against a fairy type specialist and how do you keep your arms like that all day? Man, that's gotta hurt. Nevertheless, it's battle time! Mawile goes down after two flame charges from Talonflame, and in comes Mr. Mime. We go for Fly as he sets up both Reflect and Light Screen. We eventually knock it out, and finally Kira, Sylvia, <laughs> a little Pokemon Go lore for you there, comes in and we swap to Zoro, who resists the Dazzling Gleam. We get it to low health with the Shadow Claw, but it's healed back up. And we fall in love with the damn thing. I mean... Sylveon is pretty easy to fall in love with. Annoyingly, we swap to Sanji now, who is way more likely to fall in love, but somehow he doesn't, and after we get it low again, she heals all the way back up again. But finally, we do take it out on the following turn with a Parabolic Charge. Sanji be kinda doing bits out here lately. Alright, let's go Sanji. Alrighty, into the Pokeball Factory we go, where we have to do a couple of back-to-back -back battles against some admins which we destroy and head over to Route 16, where I plan on adding my fifth member to the team. Oh! Shiny Phantom! Shiny Phantom! Yes! Oh! Yes! Oh yes! My boy! Oh! Oh! We are super lucky here getting this shiny first before anything else as it's only a 10% spawn chance. We name it Shanks and head into some ice cave where we save a ice plant monster thing and we manage to somehow calm down this ice mammoth thing so we can ride it through the snow and get to gym 7. Oh my god, he's here again! Callum, leave me alone, man! I'm not interested! Is this what it's like to have a boy chase you around? Girls, if there is even a percentage of you watching this video, let me know. Is this what it's like having a boy pesty constantly? But after we beat him again, we attempt gym 7. And if you thought the other gyms were easy, you haven't seen this gym yet. Finally, let's mega revolve Absol. Oh my god. Chopper looks so fluffy. We go for Night Slash early, but somehow we don't outspeed and Sigalith manages to set up a reflect. Kind of annoying, but we can deal with it after we raise our attack with Sword Stance and eventually take it out. In comes Slowbro now, who's also taken out by a Night Slash, and what's that? Meow Stick as well. There we go, badge 7 acquired. As we leave the gym, some random firehead guy rings everyone on the phone and says, Hey, I'ma like, blow up the world or something. I'ma, I'ma make the world go boom and that, so, yeah. So I guess since nobody else is going to do anything, I'll go and stop him. We head down to his secret base in his cafe, and his team actually kind of scares me. I forgot the fight started as soon as you walked down here, and I wasn't super prepared for it, but here we go. Leading with Mienfu. Oh god, not again. This is a trigger for me now, seeing a Mienfu I can't use. We take it down with the Shadow Claw, and in comes a Fire Lion, who I previously shit on, but it's starting to grow on me a bit more. I swapped to Talonflame to take whatever fire move it was going to use, and on the second turn, to my surprise, Echo Voice nearly knocks out Robin, leaving it on just 1 HP! I decided to stay in and go for me first, of which we were able to almost knock it out, but luckily we flinched it! I... I don't know if... I, I don't know if Echo Voice actually has a chance to flinch, but I had Rocky Helmet on, so I guess that's what happened. This means we were able to live barely, and then we were able to take it out on the following turn. Gyarados in next, we swap to Zoro, who tanks an Aquatel, and then also tanks two E-Quakes! What a freaking beast! Landing it in the red though, I wanted to swap to Helios, but E-Quake would do too much damage on Entrus, I thought. So, I sent in Talonflame first, which was super risky, praying it used E-Quake, and it did. Oh! Meaning we got a better swap into Heliolus. But on the swap in, boom! We take so much damage! What the heck? What? But barely letting me live, we managed to finish it off. Finally, his Mercury is no concern, and Shanks evolves into its final form, Trevenant. Woo! See, red hat, the red head Shanks, baby, look at it. 
But Gyarados got me really thinking. We need a final red Pokemon for the team. And I now I know the perfect one. Oh, what? What? I only just finished recording me saying I just started. God, guys, it's been like 10 minutes. I think I might have fished up like 15, 20 Magikarp max. What? <laughs> okay. I'll take it. We name it God D. Roger and evolve it into Gyarados. Woo! That red boy looking like heat, baby! We clear the rest of this base, fight a few more admins, meet a giant, and listen to some lore. Totally not like watching something else like a uh, no, really long show that has over a thousand episodes. Nevertheless, our effort to stop this weapon was for nothing, as they just boot the damn thing up anyway. So we head off to the weapon to try deactivate it. This means two more Lysander fights are on the way, as well as a bunch of boring team flare battles. Ay ay ay. The first of which is base form Lysandra. But this fight won't be as close as the last time. I've been training, man, and I've got my own Gyarados this time. He sheds a tear as he knows what's coming, and down goes Mian Shao. Same goes for Pyro, Gyarados, and Honchkrow. Aw oh, man, cry me a river, man. I should be the one crying. I gotta fight 10 grunts in a row now. Ugh. At least we get this legendary at the end. And it's not shiny, so we can't use it. What was the point? And now we have to fight Lysandra again for the final time. But apparently while I was fighting 10 of his goons, he spent the past 20 minutes running around leveling up his team as well. I don't know where he trained, but he also geared himself up on some of these gaming gadgets. Dude, gaming gadgets never improve your skill, bro. Mian Shell is taken out by two Shadow Claws, and as Pyro comes in for the counter, we swap to our Red Gyarados, who now has the ability to Mega Revolve. Oh my god! Look at that crown. Look at that boy! Look at that red boy! But Hyper Voice nearly knocks us out before we even finish it off. In comes Honchkrow now who's obliterated just like the lion before, but unfortunately now our Mega Red Dragonfish is too weak to take on the Mega Blue Dragonfish, so we will not see the two clash, but instead in comes Zoro who does take it out with a super effective Sacred Sword. This means yet another 10 year old child has saved the world from destruction. But it also means we can close out this run. Heading over to the final gym in the Snowland. We do some training with the balloons. I guess this is Balloon's Tower Defense in order to somehow pull this Dusk Stone out of our ass. Slap that stone on Dewblade, leading the two sword style to evolve into... Sword and Shield style. Damn, I was hoping for the three sword style. Ah well. Wolfric is absolutely finessed by Agislash here as we set up Sword Stance and rolled through his entire team with Sacred Sword. This guy's OP! Why is Zoro so cool? With our final badge in hand, I now make my character resemble Nami as much as I possibly can. How do you think I did? Let me know in the comments. And head up into the victory road. We're almost there. As we push through some annoying caves and just before we can make it to the league, this man still wants to talk to me, dude. I don't. What? 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 How many times? This is like the sixth time I've told you, leave me alone. Nevertheless, we ignore him and head up to the league. League battle begin. First up is X Team Flare member Malba. Yes, I learned that from the last run. Being a fire type user, we have a quality team to oppose up. Pyro is my first opponent, which we sent in Red Gyarados to counter. We set up a Dragon Dance and Mega Revolver. We take it out next turn with a Waterfall and in comes Talonflame. We take that out with a one shot as well, but we do get burned, which isn't great. Since this cuts our attack in half, I decided to swap to Robin, predicting an E-Quake as well. We dodge the Quake and then get a better swap into Zoro, who finishes it off, but not before we get dropped to really low health. Her final mom, Chandelure, comes in, so I decide to swap to Robin again, which after landing a fly which doesn't deal too much damage, I tank a Shadow Ball, which gives me the idea. Why don't we just use Shadow Ball against it? Me first, let's go. Shadow Ball knocks it out. Next up is Mr. Steel Yo Girl. Get it? Because he's a steel, steel type special. Okay, never mind. First up is Klefki, which is roasted by Talonflame, and in comes Probopass, which counters us pretty hard. So I swap to Trevenant, who slowly chips away at it with the help of Leech Seed and Hornlich. 
Eventually, we finish it off after this soul is sucked from it. In comes Sizzle now, so I swap back to Robin, who takes it out. Finally, in comes his non-shiny, boring Aegislash, who hits me and our flame body activates. Burning it, and with the help of it and Mega Chopper, we eventually send it to its grave. Next up is Drippy Drasna, who leads with Dragao, which is one that I, I really want to use this Pokemon, and I've never been able to in a run yet, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to. Sadly though for it, Absol does take down. But with Altaria coming in now, I fear the Moonblast, so I swap to Gyarados and go for Ice Fang, which lands a freeze! This is great. This allows me to set up three Dragon Dances and then finish it off. Noivern is quad weak to Ice Fan, so it stands no chance against it. And then finally, Drudagon one shot as well by the iciest of the Fangs. Let's go! That was an easy fight. Probably the easiest Elite Four I've ever had to do. Finally, it's the battle against the Water Master. Seibold? Seibold? Seibold, these nuts in your mouth. Oh, got him! Okay, I'll stop. His first Monclauncher must face my Burnt Lizard, of which the two tussle for a while as we Parabolic Charge heal as it Hyper Potions as well. Eventually, we do take it out, and in comes Gyarados. Man, they love Gyarados in this game, don't they? So, I send out my Gyarados, which we Mega Evolve and Dragon Dance before we take it out. In next is Babarical, which can be a really scary mon to fight. Luckily, we have Trevenant, which now has its time to shine, one-shotting it with Horn Leech. His final mon, Starmie, fares no better, though, who's destroyed by Shadow Force. Woo, baby, we've done it! We've made it to the champion, and with no deaths! I think this is the first time we've done this. Let's go. But that's enough talk. It's time to battle. Leading with Horlucha, we lead with Heliolisk. We must have had a speed tie as we both move first. As we endure its flying press, we take it out after it heals up with a potion. In comes Gudra now, who I paralyze as it brings me down to low health. We then swap to Aegislash, who does take it out after boosting our attack with Swords Dance as it gets full paralyzed twice. In comes Tyrantrum now, who is knocked out by Sacred Sword one shot, and same goes for Gorgas. I guess the sword is better than a pumpkin, apparently. Alright. Oh, Aurorus? Not a problem for us. One shot as well, leaving just Mega Gardevoir. We swap to Chopper to tank the Shadow Ball. Thinking I would outspeed, I went for a bite to hopefully flinch it, but somehow this damn uh, chunky Gardevoir outspeeds us, knocking out Chopper. What? Chopper, no! Anyone but Ch I did not expect that. We had almost done the whole thing flawless, only to fall at the gates. Nevertheless, now we had to avenge him, and so in comes Mega Gyarados, King of the Pirates, to finish it off. <laughs> oh, is that Thunderbolt? Oh, that did more than I expected. What the hell? Well, not a I did not expect that Thunderbolt. Oh, it hangs on. We move second then. So, on the off chance that she heals instead, we can Dragon Dance, then Waterfall. She does! Maybe this will be enough to outspeed her. The Dragon Dance might be enough to outspeed. Then we don't lose Goldie Roger. Is it enough to outspeed? It is! Waterfall! Let's go! And boom, that's how I beat a Pokemon Y red, shiny, only hardcore Nuzlocke. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, smash like, subscribe, and just for you One Piece fans out there, I only just started watching the show, so a lot of my references are probably early on in the show, and uh, so forgive me for that. But over the whole recording process of this video, I watched nearly 260 episodes of One Piece while shiny hunting and all of that, but I'm probably a lot further along by now. Anyway, I'm out. See you later. Have a good day. Bye.